It is, it's um, like this is all in the age for temporary things, but like there's really no way to um, yeah, yeah, and it doesn't tear up as you like, you know, like, 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 it just doesn't, there's a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Um, so if you have a big event, it's pretty commonly used, uh, but for something like this. Um, it's just more like, um, I mean, you know, the last thing you have to do is someone who needs to get the Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hey, Victoria. Good morning. I brought my headset just in case. Nice. So I was just testing out the, uh, stream stuff. Um, okay. so I did bring everything up. Um, I got the projector. I put a little message up on there. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is the live stream right here already, so we don't have. I already brought that up. Okay. So um, the only thing that we should have to do is uh, on the live stream. We just need to unmute it, okay. and that should be. It's not. And muted. then just double click. Huh? It's not muted. Oh no no! no I'm just telling it for like uh, <laughs> the the video the video itself. Um, it so, sh it should be muted. Other ones like that one and that one.
That's it. Yep, graduation will be starting in a couple of minutes. Um, I think it's, it's. I don't see it in the frame. That camera's on. Oh, sorry. What do you need? Should we do we pick up the podium and move it when we get to the speech? The speaker? Yeah. Um, yes. That, Tina said that that's what she was going to do, but I'm not sure. I, I, she just said that somebody was going to move it, but I don't know who specifically. Okay, I'll check with me. Maybe he understands and has a plan. Okay. Ooh, is live people are watching this? Mm -hmm. oh my god, I was standing up there. I was standing up there. I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 
Yes. Who's going to be moving the podium with this man? Okay. I have thirty four. I knew there was a plan, I just Sounds good. I'm also recording just in case. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm not sure. I don't think so.
Are you can no. up here. Now we're unmuted again. Yeah, yep. If you have any issues, let me know. Oh, Operating the camera. Where do I stand, I guess? And, uh, um, so I should stand here on the podium. You could do that. Um, I was just thinking about standing right here because it's going to probably be loud enough. See, that's where the camera is right now. So, okay. anywhere in there is good. I was just planning to move the camera where I'm standing. So. Maybe I'll just, maybe I will stand at the podium. Because oh. this is all mic'd up there. Okay. I, I think the microphone's in this room. Um, so when the graduates start walking in, I'm going to start on you and then pan over this way. Okay. So. Alright. Yeah, I'll just stand at the podium. Alright, awesome. Thank you. Oh. I'm so much proud of you. 
Son's trying to get this on YouTube or whatever they call it. Okay. Can go to the MCC. Okay. Oh. Oh. Um, you can go to the MCC.
Mojo, Modern Love and Vision Codes. Either Jay Conning and Doing Too Well. Up one and go down. Just crawling in the meat and the day. Vision of day and go. I'm going to show they say mom. Modern Love. Java and Love. Mugabe and Love. You want to be waiting and Love. I'm going to show they say mom. I'm going to show they say mom. The brain give thanks to the tobacco. We ask for blessings for these graduates. We ask for their tobacco that their dream and vision. We continue to follow that. We ask for our tobacco, the good things and joy. We ask for all those good things for our people and for our graduates. We say thanks to the Creator and our Father, giving us all that we have, give us a good mind. Say we rich, rich, rich. Please be seated. Uncle, Uncle Chris Kalanar. Hani, Mojo, Mahalish Makpa, Nish Nas, Nijik Nani, Nadol. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Good. I can't hear you. Come on, now. Good morning. This is a day of celebration. How is everybody doing? Awesome. Awesome. So, members of the class of 2021, faculty and staff, Board of Regents, distinguished guests, Cherished family members and friends, welcome to the 2021 Bay Community College 37th Annual Commencement Ceremony. I'd like to get to it's a great honor to welcome all of you who are attending in person, and of course, all of you who are attending virtually via our live stream. In case you didn't know, we are streaming this on YouTube for uh, uh, graduates who cannot make it today and for our family members who cannot be here today due to our limitations. I really hope that we are able to uh, host a full-fledged graduation ceremony next year. So let's continue that hope and hopefully we'll have a, a, a packed room in here next year. <clears throat> Eight bachelor's degrees, 52 associate's degrees, 26 certificates, 42 certificates of completions, eight diplomas, and the first honorary degree will be awarded today. As all of you know, the pandemic has changed how we do things as a society, how we do things as an individual, as an organization, and as a family. We had to make many adjustments as new guidelines were posted on a daily basis and oftentimes had to make this adjustment within the day or sometimes within the hour. Uh, this pandemic not only affected the way that we live today, it also affected the way, uh, it actually affected our BMCC family, which includes losing two of our friends, two of our families, two of our colleagues. We think about it every day. As we move into today's main event, I would just like us to take a moment to acknowledge your passing and to reflect on how it impacted our lives. Please join me in a moment of silence. Too much. To the class of 2021, BMCC is extremely proud of all of your accomplishments during your time here. Each one of you had to make major changes to your life to accomplish your goals. It's stressful enough to go to school, to raise a family, to work while going to school. But guess what? You did it and you are here. And you did all of this while you managed the pandemic. It certainly did not make our lives easier during the past uh, year and a half. But again, every one of you are here today and we are here to honor and celebrate your accomplishments today. Your accomplishments are also due in part to, your ded or to the dedication of your family, your friends, and your peers. Your support system encouraged you to challenge yourself. They were there to pick you up when you stumbled on your way. And they also pestered you to meet your goals. Believe me, I know what it's like to get pestered to meet your goals because I'm the, probably the hugest procrastinator there is. So of course my support system was always there for me. Graduates, uh, please rise. These, your support system, your parents, your siblings, your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles, your mentors, your peers, faculty and staff, your extended family and community kept on encouraging you. 
So let's take a moment to uh, take a look at your family members who are here today and those who are attending virtually and say thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. Please be seated. To all the family and friends who are here today and those who are attending virtually, I'd just like to say it's been an honor to have your family members here to be part of our BNCC family. So Chief McWitch for allowing them to join our family here. As many of you know, this is my first year serving as BNCC's president. It's an honor to be here to celebrate our graduating class. And to be honest, I dreamed about this and sometimes became very nervous about giving this particular speech because it's been quite some time since I actually had to speak at an official engagement uh, for several years. Um, I'm excited and humbled to be addressing all of you on this special occasion. Class of 2021, I hope each of you is proud to be here today. During your time at BMCC, you were challenged, you learned the meaning of dedication and hard work, and you learned that you could do anything that you put your mind today to. to. Today, we honor everything you achieved during your time at BMCC. We also celebrate as you move forward on the next phase of your journey. Whether you're entering the workforce or whether you're transferring to a four-year university, uh, please know that you will always have BMCC in your corner and you will always be considered as part of our family. Bottom line, you've seen an opportunity and you acted upon it. So on my first commencement address, I would like to ask if I could, if you, if you could give me a moment to do something that I said I would always do or that I would do if I was ever in this position. I even told my wife and kids this, so I better carry through on this opportunity here. I promise it will only take one minute or two, so please entertain me for a second. I told my wife and family that I would take a selfie, so. <laughs> Thank you for allowing me to do that. <laughs> As I reflect on my first year of being BNCC's president, I can't help but think about the most common question that I'm asked. What is it like to start as a president during a pandemic? My response is quite simple. Even though we are charged with providing a safe campus community while offering a high quality education, it has been a very easy transition. Simply put, the family and the team that is instilled here at BMCC made this transition into this position super easy. I cannot ask for a better group of awesome people to work with. Simply put, I work with the best of the best. Please join me in a round of applause to thank all of the faculty and staff who make this the best campus in the Eastern UP and also the best tribal college in the nation. As BMCC graduates, you will be able to take what you learn here and apply it to your future endeavors. Ultimately, you will build your own path while you're working to achieve your goals. While you build your own path, remember all that you accomplished at BMCC. You worked hard to earn this credential. I know from experience that it's not always easy to uh, finish these goals. Oftentimes, you try to spend the evenings burning the midnight oil, reading your final English paper, because we all know how English professors can be, right? They can be pretty tough. Um, but uh, you also, you know, cramming at the last minute for an exam, spending hours away from your family to come to classes, to stay time at the library, to study for an exam. Uh, all of this took a lot of hard work and dedication. <clears throat> this is just some of my examples of your dedication. You did what you needed to do to get here today, so give yourselves a round of applause, graduates. As you move forward, you may find that your path is not so clear. In fact, you will probably stumble along the way, but no, everyone stumbles at one point in time during a journey and we all make mistakes, because that's my wife and kids, and make mistakes all the time. However, as long as you pick yourself up, dust yourself up, uh, pick yourself up, dust yourself off, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, your support system will always also be there to help you and guide you along your lifelong journey. In closing, I'd like to leave you some advice that had helped me stay focused through my academic and professional career. Uh, this advice that also helped me in my personal life. And I often share this with a lot of folks that I speak with. I would ask each of you, family members and graduates, uh, to make sure that you take some time to reflect on your day every day. What this does, it helps, for me, it helped me think about things that I could have done better, 
what worked well and things that I could do to uh, ensure that I continue my personal and professional growth. These are the moments that will help guide you on a lifelong journey. Again, congratulations on your accomplishments, class of 2021. We're very excited to see where your journey will take you. Team and watch. Dr. Cheryl Crazy Bull is our commencement speaker for today. Dr. Crazy Cheryl Bull has served as president and CEO of the American Indian College Fund since 2012. A lifelong educator and community activist, Dr. Cheryl Crazy Bull is an advocate for self determination, focused on native voice, philosophy, and traditions of the heart of the people in the building prosperity for current and future generations. Cheryl's experience includes serving Santa Augusta University as a faculty member. Department Chair and Dean of Academic Affairs and Vice President of Administration, St. Francis Indian School as Chief Educational Officer, and 10 years as President of Northwest Indian College. Tracy Bull is a frequent public speaker and presenter about Indigenous education and issues with a focus on Indigenous higher education equity and place-based education. She was awarded an honorary cultural degree from Cynthia Gluska University, an honorary doctorate from Seattle University, and other awards for her leadership as Native educator and Native woman. Due to travel restrictions currently in place, Dr. Cheryl Crazy Bull would deliver the commencement address virtually. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Cheryl Crazy Bull. I'm Petty Wash de Midakiapi, Wachiapi, we, Imachiapi, Lena, Shitangola, Kotam, Imataha, Lena, Itancha, American Indian College Fund, Chante Wash de Nape, Chiusapi. Good day, relatives. My Lakota name, Wachiapi, we, means they depend on her. Good day, my other name. I'm Petty Wash de Midakiapi, Wachiapi, we, Imachiapi, Lena, Shitangola, Kotam, Imataha. Lena Itancha, American Indian College Fund. Chante Washte Nape Chiyuzapi. Good day, relatives. My Lakota name, Wachiapi, we, means they depend on her. My other name is Cheryl Crazy Bull. I am a citizen of the Chichango Lakota Oyate, located in present day South Dakota. I am currently serving as president of the American Indian College Fund. I greet you with a good heart and a handshake. Thank you for inviting me to share your graduation. I wish the situation were different so that I could enjoy the beauty of the Upper Peninsula and the homelands of the Anishinaabe people. I want to thank President Bedell and the leadership of Bay Mills Community College for giving me this time to congratulate you and to share a few words. I also want to acknowledge retired President Mickey Parrish, who I had the pleasure of working with for many years. President Parrish's commitment to Indian education has been an inspiration to all who know him. We can all see the evidence of his commitment and the success of students and of the college. We know that President Vidal will provide the same vision and leadership. This is a special time for each of you and for your families and for those who supported you in the pursuit of your dreams. I hope in my remarks to convey some of why this achievement is so special. We cannot, as Native people, take our education for granted. Our grandparents and those who came before them often experienced education as a force that took language, kinship, and traditional knowledge away from them. For many of them, protecting our cultural teachings and our ways of knowing was done quietly and even in secret. We can thank them for that because it allows us to be present here as graduates of a tribally controlled, place-based institution. For decades now, we as Indigenous people have fought back against the loss of our identities, our lands, and our ways of knowing. We have fought for our own educational systems, for our own story to be the one that is told, for our own knowledge to be the heart of curriculum and learning, for our desire for our families to have good health and happiness to be the foundation of education, and for our prosperity and well-being to be the result. 
We fight so that a meaningful college education is possible for anyone in our communities. There are over 3,000 post-secondary institutions in the United States, and I often think of what an incredibly revolutionary and visionary act it was for the founders of the tribal college movement to create our institutions of higher learning. While there were hints of the need for education by and for Native people for many years prior to the 1950s and 60s, it was really not until the Renaissance led by the American Indian movement during the Civil Rights era that our dream of our own educational institutions came to fruition. Now our 35 institutions that are members of the American Indian Higher Education Consortium, along with the many other tribally controlled institutions at various stages of development, lead the way in place-based, culturally rich, responsive, and community-engaged education. And I also want to acknowledge that some of you may be transfer students and, or you may go to graduate school. So I want to recognize that we work closely with our colleagues at predominantly white institutions so that our Native people can pursue their educational dreams in safe and welcoming spaces. Tribal colleges and universities are also unique because we are truly community-based institutions. We work in so many areas of community well-being, Native language restoration, food sovereignty, health and fitness, K-12 partnerships are all examples of work that occurs alongside the vocational and academic programs that are the priorities of our communities. We step up when there is a need. For example, when the pandemic started, Bay Mills was one of those institutions that stepped right into the need for protective equipment by producing face masks. Your business acumen combined with your commitment to community prompted you to be responsive in a very welcome and needed way. Your institution and your students modeled community engagement and outreach. In August of 1981, I began my career in tribally controlled education by serving as a faculty member at what is now Sinta Iglesca University on my home reservation, the Rosebud. At that time, there were many founders of the tribal college movement still living. When I can share in the accomplishments of our students and of graduates like you, it reminds me of them and their vision. You as students and graduates remind me of their great love for us. Your achievements fill my heart with, with the goodness of our people and with a renewed enthusiasm for the work of our institutions. That is why I'm so pr appreciative of being able to share your graduation with you. I am witnessing, witnessing your successes with memories in my heart. I, we often say that we are the dreams of our ancestors come to life. What do we mean by that? Our ancestors were more than survivors. Our ancestors realized that we were going to have to live in situations where our very identities and our lives were at risk. So they did what was necessary so we could be here today as tribal citizens. They adapted so that we could live. They translated our ways of knowing into contemporary society. They founded institutions and organizations that would lift us up in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. You have shown as a college and as students that you adapt, translate, and lift up your families and your communities. Your graduation is a joyful celebration. It's a moment in time when you can pause to reflect on how you got here and on what the future holds for you. I think of it as the first of many moments you will have in celebration of your achievements. I want to end by remembering the teachings of your people, the seven sacred teachings wisdom, respect, bravery, honesty, humility, and truth, and most importantly, love. In 2020, the College Fund was honored to give a Think Indian Community Awareness Grant to your college. That grant was used to pay the seven sacred teachings mural in your admin building. Those teachings are vital to who you are as Anishinaabe. That mural represents love. Years ago, I committed myself to share my hopes and dreams with other indigenous people, to give support and care as each of you is on your life's journey, and to be present when called upon to listen and learn. I ask you to make that same commitment. We love you, we are proud of you, we are happy for you. We thank your family and friends for supporting you. We look forward to all the wonderful lives you will lead and to all the ways you will share your knowledge and learning with us. Chimigwich, Wopila, thank you. Sauce.
speak because I have that <clears throat> At this moment, we have a few awards and recognitions that we would like to give. And our first uh, award is the Frank Hugo Mishmawe Bin Language Memorial Award. Michelle, Mike, would you like to come up and present these awards? starts to emerge. 
um, the, the speaking ability. And so he was he was doing that and inspiring him. And I see this coming up behind him. So for his dedication and support that he gave to his fellow LTD members and to us here and by coming back and being with us face to face, he always enjoyed um, the games that we played and, and brought us a lot of laughter and um, hockey and cheese every now and then, which was really <laughs> nice <laughs> nice to to share with us. So he's our 2020 recipient and he's not here today. Um, with COVID, he had to stay home. Um, and also as an elder, I don't know if he ever even knew how to turn a computer on, but <laughs> thanks to his classmates down there that we hooked him up with a hotspot and a laptop, so he has been joining us on Zoom. I don't know if he's on the link today watching. So uh, we have class again this weekend coming up right away after graduation, so I'm sure we'll get a chance to talk to him and honor him at that time. This next recipient um, graduated a couple years ago with her six year diploma, and um, we didn't think she'd be able to be here, but she's here as a guest of one of our other graduates from the PA program. So we're going to ask um, a guest, Carla Swamp, to step forward. Carla, like Mike and myself, has gone through the Chicago Marine Instructors Institute, and then right when she graduated from that, the Penae program came into existence, and she's been with it right from the beginning. Another, <laughs> <laughs> another dedicated student who traveled even during weekdays. This, this uh, really inspired me, and, and uh, I, I admire her her energy and efforts to come. Uh, days a week and five weekends every semester for all these years and um, she's also worked in her tribal community developing language programs she's gotten several um, grants for, for language restoration and revitalization efforts she's taught at uh, the community college down in her home area and she's been teaching for us online the companion courses to the on campus language classes for the last Um, she, she brings her family along with her to these things, and um, I think we probably, probably are all related. Everybody that's here <laughs> from out to TV today. Um, so, for your your effort and dedication, and outstanding achievement, and persevering, and um, revitalizing. presentation that we have is for our student of the year. Uh, the American Indian College Fund sponsors the Native American Student of the Year. However, at BTC, we decided to sponsor a non-Native American, non-Native Student of the Year as well. <coughs> our American Indian College Fund Student of the Year student is Trinity Bowen. She's not here today. However, Trinity has been a staple on our campus as she is interned as the uh, IT intern, um, so she's very familiar with our campus, she's very familiar with the processes and procedures we have here, and it's also my understanding that she is also a class leader throughout her courses as well. <clears throat> the the non-native uh, student of the year is Molly Millette. 
Uh, she is a leader in her classes as well, and I believe she is here graduating today. If that's the case, can we give her a round of applause? So Molly, if I can have you join me up here on stage. For the first time in BMCC history, we are going to award an honorary degree. The recipient of this honorary degree is inspired, has inspired her family, her fellow students, and friends as she worked, completed, worked to complete her lifelong goals of receiving her formal education. Deciding to put off school while raising her children, she began her educational journey later in life. It's my understanding that she always had a smile on her face, that she was extremely excited to be in school and always worked hard in each of her classes. Unfortunately, the student was taken away from her family, friends, peers, and BNCC way too early because of COVID. A recommendation was submitted to my office by an employee who knew her. After discovering that BNCC did not have a policy for honorary degrees, our team went to work right away to write this policy, send it off for approval to the Board of Regents, verify that all of the conditions that were set forth in this policy were met, and to inform the family of this award. This all took place in three days. So we, we essentially moved mountains to make sure that this happened for, for our, our honorary year. I am honored and proud to present BMCC's Honorary Associates of Arts and Liberal Arts to Sarah Gardner and her family. On behalf of Sarah Gardner's family, Suzette, her sister, who is also graduating here, is, to, is here to accept this degree. I'd just like to say that Sarah will always continue to be an inspiration to all of us.
So now let's come to the main event of our program today, and we are going to start off with our, our acknowledging our graduates today. I would like to ask for the Board of Regents to come up. And Samantha Cameron, VP of Academics, will announce the graduates as they come across the stage. Are we ready? Let's begin. The very first graduate today <coughs> is Robert Fillmore, Bachelor of Arts, Early Childhood Education. <coughs> Childhood Education. Early Childhood Education. Bianca Sanders, Bachelor of Arts, Early Childhood Education. <laughs> Dominic Bowers, Associate of Applied Science, Computer Information Systems. Associate of Applied Science, Construction Technology, and Certificate of Completion, Construction Technology. <laughs> Alicia C. Bum, Associate of Applied Science, Office Administration. Shelly Duman Wabla, Associate of Arts, Business Administration. Associate of Arts, Business Administration. <laughs> B. 
Victoria Mershberger, Associate of Arts, Business Administration and Certificate, Michigan Transfer Agreement. Associate of Arts Business Administration and Certificate Michigan Transfer Agreement. Miranda Rose Menard, Associate of Arts. Rebecca Elston, Associate of Arts, Early Childhood Education. Associate of Arts, Early Childhood Education. <laughs> Stephanie Noss, Associate of Arts, Early Childhood Education. <laughs> Mandy Price. Associate of Arts, Early Childhood Education. Early Childhood Education. Crystal Lehan Willis, Associate of Arts, Early Childhood Education. Jamie Catherine Young. Associate of Arts, Early Childhood Education. <laughs> Catherine Easley, Associate of Arts, Liberal Arts, and Certificate Michigan Transfer Agreement. <laughs> K. 
Caitlin Wanick, Associate of Arts, Native American Studies. Savannah Dalgard, Associate of Arts, Social Science. <laughs> Kathleen Derry, Associate of Arts, Social Science and Certificate Michigan Transfer Agreement. Suzette Gardner, Associate of Arts, Social Science, and Certificate Michigan Transfer Agreement. Candace Hurt, Associate of Arts, Social Science, and Certificate in Education. Molly Millette, Associate of Arts, Social Science, and Certificate, Michigan Transfer Agreement. Lena Walker, Associate of Arts, Social Science, and Certificate, Michigan Transfer Agreement. Mia R. Evanson, Associate of Science, General Science, and Certificate Michigan Transfer Agreement. Morgan Gates, Associate of Science, Health Science, and Certificate Health Science and Certificate Michigan Transfer Agreement. Natasha Cairns, Certificate of Completion, Early Childhood Education. Kimberly Troop, Certificate of Completion, Early Childhood Education.
Carol Lynette Kiokama, Diploma Anishinaabe Win in the Immersion Program, two years. Jane Marie Martel, Diploma in Anishinaabe and Wampanoag Immersion Program, two years. Darlene Ann Rice, Diploma, Anishinaabe with the Immersion Program, two years. Mani Talcloud, Diploma in Ishnaba and Women Immersion, today immersion program to you. Cheryl A. Bernier, Diploma in Ishinaabe Wentonate Immersion Program, four years. So graduates, I have one question for you. Are you guys ready for this? Ready for a big moment here? You can now take the tassels and move them from the left to the right side of your hood to signify your accomplishment. Congratulations. Before we close out today's ceremony, I'd just like to announce that we have mock lunches here for everyone. So once the ceremonies are over, you guys can go over to the kitchen over that way and pick up a box lunch. Feel free to eat lunch here in your pods or take them outside. We're pretty free to take them to go with you. Again, congratulations, class of 2021. Wow. 
Again, congratulations to the class of 2021.
concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for being here.